Yeah, um, that clip right there is exactly why I feel like I made the correct decision to retire from baseball my senior year of college, even though I'm gonna give myself some credit, I was pretty good. Even top prospect of the Phillies, Bryson Stott, said I was nasty. So again, I was pretty solid, but I knew going forward I would not be able to touch a 102 fastball from Jacob deGrom because then he has the slider. He's got off-speed pitches for days. Jacob deGrom is healthy, and I cannot wait to see him have a full 30-game season under his belt because he is going to be breaking record after record if that actually happens but what's going on everyone it's fuzzy welcome back to yet another mlb recap today is the first day of spring training yes games are going to be played so if you're going to any spring training games or any concerts anytime soon use code fuzzy on SeatGeek to save yourself 20 bucks off any tickets that you guys are getting now real quick before we talk about freddie freeman frederick going to the dodgers on a massive six-year deal let's go ahead and do a small little fast cap of all of the other free agents that recently signed that I forgot to mention. Daniel Vogelback is going to the Pirates. Nico Goodrum, I'm still really big on this kid. I feel like his ceiling is pretty high. He just has to be consistent. He is going to the Astros. Maybe they're preparing for Carlos Correa to leave, but I don't know if Nico would be the full-time shortstop. Matthew Boyd, another former Tiger going to a different team. He is going to the San Francisco Giants. Colin McHugh, who might have been the best relief pitcher in all of baseball last year, is going to the Atlanta Braves after the Braves lost Chris Martin. Uh, Andrew Chafin, he is going to the Tigers. So the Tigers, they lose Matthew Boyd, the starting pitcher, but they gain an asset. And Andrew Chafin, one of the better lefties in baseball. Corey Dickerson is going to the St. Louis Cardinals. I'm pretty sure he is going to be a DH because the outfield is set with Bader, Carlson, and O'Neal. Uh, you have Matt Duffy going to the Anna why did I almost say Anaheim? The LA Angels. And then last but not least, this just came out. Jonathan VR, who was kind of a spark plug for the Mets last year. He's terrible on the bases. He does a lot of stupid things, but he's exciting and fun to watch. He is going to the Chicago Cubs. So the Cubs are definitely 1 million percent out on Carlos Correa and Trevor Story. And now the moment that you've all been waiting for. Freddie Freeman is no longer a member of the Atlanta Braves. We knew this and he put out a kind of a farewell to the city of Atlanta and that he really enjoyed his time and that Braves country will always be special to him. But Freddie owns a house in LA. We knew that this was going to happen as soon as Matt Olson was traded and extended when he became a member of the Atlanta Braves. So Freddie gets a six year deal worth $162 million. So he's getting paid about the same as Chris Bryant. Now real quick, I wanna make a correction on Chris Bryant. I have no problem with the Rockies signing free agents. I just have a problem with them losing losing Trevor Story for nothing and giving away Nolan Arenado to the Cardinals and paying them $50 million to do so. It's just that their organizational plan doesn't really make sense. And I don't believe that Chris Bryant makes them a playoff contender even in the next four or five years, unless they have a sneaky plan in place. I just wanted to go ahead and set the record straight. I love when small market teams sign free agents, when it makes sense and that they're actually having a plan in place. I don't see a plan in place in Colorado. But let's get back to the Dodgers, an actual favorite to win a division crown in the NL West. This lineup is going to be stupid. Freddie Freeman, I do just want to mention, even though he's making $27 million a year, he is going to get hosed in taxes. So after taxes, I would say that $27 million is going to be anywhere from 16 to 20 net income. And that's because California taxes are ridiculous, especially when you're in the upper echelon of rich people. So keep that in mind. Freddie Freeman, he is not getting paid $27 million a year. But regardless, this lineup is going to be crazy. When you have AJ Pollock penned as your eight or nine hitter considering the universal dh is now a thing that is ridiculous and then you also factor in you have four mvps on one single team freddie freeman won an mvp mookie betts cody bellinger clayton kershaw all of these guys are mvp players and when your biggest question mark is hey is cody bellinger gonna be an average hitter in 2022 that's a really good problem to have now to me I actually do not think that the Dodgers are a whole lot better than what they were last year. Corey Seager is a dog. If we take a look at these stats, Freddie Freeman over his last 600 at-bats has been pretty good. 58 extra base hits and a 133 OPS plus. Corey Seager over his last 565, so 35 less at-bats. He has 69 very nice extra base hits, so 11 more even though he has 35 less at-bats. And then he has a 147 OPS plus. He is just injury prone. The reason why Freddie Freeman 
technically makes the Dodgers a better team is because he's more reliable. But to me, Corey Seager, at his peak is one of the premier left-handed hitters in baseball along with Freddie Freeman. They're kind of in the same conversation. So I'm not sure if this makes them infinitely better. Does it make them better? Sure, on paper, I guess that you could say that because Freddie is gonna be in the lineup more often, but Corey Seager, when he is right and when he is healthy, I mean, to me, he has a higher ceiling than Freddie Freeman as an offensive player because he's got the speed, he's got the contact skills, he's got the pop, he can go gap to gap. He is really good and the Rangers are about to be a whole lot better because of that also with the addition of Marcus Simeon. So to me, are the Dodgers improving? Yes. Do they have money to spend? Yes. Are they the premier organization in baseball? Absolutely. If you are a sports team, you are trying to emulate the Dodgers because they spend money, they have great fans, they have an insane farm system, so much so that they were able to acquire Trey Turner and only give away Keebit Ruiz, but they have Will Smith at catcher, so it's not like they're losing a whole bunch. Will Smith is gonna be their catcher for the foreseeable future, and they have Austin Barnes if they want to DH Will Smith. So the Dodgers with Walker Bueller, Clayton Kershaw, Julio Urias, Tony Gonsolin, Dustin May, they still have a really good rotation going into 2022. And again, they are the premier organization in baseball right now. I feel like they're better run than the Yankees. They're better run than the Red Sox. They are the team to beat right now because they do everything right. And everyone else in Major League Baseball is trying to catch up to them. I know everyone is making the jokes that all of that money spent and all of that farm system just to finish second in the division behind the Giants and then lose in the NLDS. I don't believe that's going to happen happen this year. The Dodgers, to me, right now are the best team in baseball on paper. The Braves are really good. There's a lot of other teams that are going to make some noise as well. But that pretty much wraps up Freddie Freeman going to the Dodgers. Now, real quick, I want to talk about the top remaining free agents. We have Carlos Correa. And right now, the two teams that are interested the most, surprisingly, the Orioles, according to a few peeps, there is a contract offer out there for 10 years, about 300 to $330 million. And then of course the Astros are in play yet again as well because of the CBT increase. Trevor Story, the Red Sox are interested, but the thing that makes me laugh is the fact that Xander Bogarts would stay as the primary shortstop. Xander Bogarts has a negative 55 DRS over the last four or five years. He has been horrific. He's improved, which is still not saying something because I think last year he had negative four or five DRS. So I would put Trevor Story at short and move Xander Bogarts to second. That's just what I would do. And also the twins are expected to be in the running for Trevor Story as well. Michael Conforto, I really only have heard the White Sox interested at this moment as well as the Phillies. So if you're a Mets fan, do you want Michael Conforto back or do you feel like you're fine with Mark Canna, Starlin Marte, and I can't remember the other guy that you signed. Nick Castellanos, he himself has interest in the Marlins, but it looks like the Marlins are not trying to spend money on a guy with his skill set. They want better overall players, people that can play defense as well. And I guess Nick Castellanos does not fit that mold. Tommy Pham, I'm hearing that the Yankees and the Phillies are the two teams that are both interested in him. We have Jorge Soler. Almost everyone seems to be interested in Jorge Soler, but specifically right now, I'm hearing the Padres are the front runner. And then last but not least, Kenley Jansen. He and the Dodgers have had talks and the manager, Dave Roberts, he would love to have Kenley back in a Dodger blue uniform. But that does it for today's MLB recap. A reminder, if you're going to any spring training games, please save yourself 20 bucks off on SeatGeek using code fuzzy. If you've already used my code, just make a new email and you can reuse it over and over and over again. So that's a small little trick for you guys, but that's all. Thank you guys for watching and have a good one. Dude, I need to get this stupid sinus infection gone because I, I don't sound okay even though I feel 100% right. Scratch.